Okay, so um, as I said in the other video, I want to walk you through how to do um, numbers one. And number one and two are very much the same um, thing. And I want to show you how to do um, number three and the and three and four are pretty much the same thing. Obviously, the numbers are different and the um, reaction is different. So going back up here to number one, uh, one and two are very easy, or they should be. But numbers one and two, you're just looking for um, the ratios. And remember, those ratios are those coefficients that are in front of the elements or compounds. So for the number one, it's asking you, um, given the reaction here, this equation, provide the following molar ratios. So they want us to know or find out what's the ratio between the nitrogens and the hydrogens. So super easy, just look at the coefficients in the reaction. So remember, if there's no number in front of it, that means there's a one there. Remember, we don't write ones in chemistry. So there's one and two, right? One and two, there's a one there. And then how many, for every one and twos, how many H2s are there? Well, there you go, this number is right there, it's three. So for every one and two, you're gonna need three H2s. Um, they want us to know the ratio between um, N2 and NH3, ammonia. So again, you just find the number up there, it's a one. And then the ratio, what's the coefficient, the number in front of the NH3? It's a two. And then finally, they want us to know, well, what's the relationship between the hydrogens and the ammonia? Well, you go back up here, H2, what's the coefficient in front of it? It's a three. And what's the coefficient in front of the NH3? It's a two. So it's a three to two ratio between the hydrogens and the ammonia. So super easy. You should be able to do the next one easy peasy. Don't worry about reducing these. It's just going to cause problems and confusion. confusion. Whatever the coefficient is in front of the compound or element, keep it as is. Don't worry about reducing these. Um, it's going to cause problems, like I said, when you get to stoichiometry equations and whatnot. So just leave them as is. So do number two on your own. I do have the answer key on the website if you need it. Let's take a look at number three. So number three, we're actually going to start doing um, some of the math um, involved in converting from one compound or element to another. But again, it starts out nice and easy. 3A is just asking us what is the relationship between the hydrogen and the water in this equation. It's balanced. So remember, you're really looking for those coefficients. If there isn't one, like the case here, there's a one there, you're looking at the coefficients. Remember, it's a recipe. Two of these plus one of these equals two of these. So what is the relationship between the H2 and the H2L? You just look at the coefficient. It's a two to two ratio. So we're just gonna put two to two. Don't worry about reducing these. It's just gonna cause confusion later. So just use that. So now they're asking us with 20 moles of H2, hydrogen gas, and excess oxygen. So it just means don't worry, you're never gonna run out of these. If you have plenty of this, how many moles of water could be produced? So we're asking, being asked, if we put 20 moles of this in, how many moles of this are we going to get? Right? Some of you could probably figure this out already without doing the math, but I'm going to show you the math because the process is going to be the same. So I start by writing out, what are they giving me? They're giving me 20 moles of H2. Right? That's what they're asking me to start with. Right? And they're asking me how many moles of water could be produced. So I need to know the relationship between the hydrogen and the water. Right? And that's right up here. There's your relationship between the hydrogen and water. You actually just did it right there. So it's two to two. Right? So we put our two moles of H2 on the bottom and our two moles of water on the top. That will cancel these. Right? So you do 20 times 2, which is 40, divided by 2, which is 20. So you would have 20 moles of H2O. And if you think about it, that makes sense. It's really a one-to-one relationship. Right? For every two of these, you get two of these. So if you put 20 of these in, you're going to get 20 of those. So that's why some of you could probably figure it out already. 
This one here is asking us what's the relationship, the molar ratio between the oxygen and the water. Go back up here. Remember when there isn't a number, it's a 1. So you put 1. And there's a 2 in front of the water there, so it's 2. So it's a 1 to 2 ratio. All right, now we're being asked if we have 20 moles of oxygen and we don't have to worry. Excess means you don't have, you'll never run out of it. So if we have 20 moles of oxygen, how many moles of water could we make? So again, some of you could probably figure this out without having to do the math, but I'm going to do the math. So you have 20 moles of oxygen. They want us to know how many moles of water could we make. Well, we've got to find the relationship. We actually did it right there. So it's one mole of O2, and from that we'll get two moles of H2O. Mole will cancel of oxygen. We'll cancel on the bottom. So it's just 20 times 2 which is 40 moles of water. And that makes sense. If it's a 1 to 2, it doubles. So for every one of these, you get two of these. So if you put 20 oxygens in, it's going to double, and you're going to get 40 moles of water. Right? And then for number 4, it's very similar. You should be able to work through this using the, that what, you know, what we did together there. So give it, a, give it a try. Get your keys online. I don't recommend you just copy from it. That's not going to help you at all. But it's there to check your work because I understand um, it's very important for a lot of you guys to check your work. You want to know you're doing it right before you continue. Um, so that's why I put the answer keys up there for you so that you could check, you could check and doing it right instead of doing it all wrong and then find out you're doing it all wrong at the end. Right? So give it a shot.